Hello, my name is Robert Dean Steele, and this is your daily Bible class. Well, we're looking at the book of Titus. We're in Titus chapter 1, verses 6 and following. He outlines the responsibilities of an elder or a church leader. He says, an elder must be blameless. That means that we they, they can't attach blame to us. We must live a life that is so um, godly that people, when they when they basically try to lay blame on us, they won't be able to do that. I love the story of Daniel, where Daniel was honest and upright, and his enemies, when they tried to find something wrong, they couldn't find anything in his life to be able to hang on him. And so that's how we're supposed to be. Not only blameless before men, but blameless for God. And that means a direction that you're going to love the Lord with every fiber of your being, that you're going to seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you, that you're going to be sensitive and yielding to the Holy Spirit. Then he goes on to say this, he says, faithful to his wife, a man whose children believe. So he says, first of all, you have to have fidelity in marriage. Secondly, he says, your children should be believers. Now folks, that's not easy to do, but one of, the way, one of the ways that that can happen is every single day, love your wife and, be an, and uh, be an example for your children. And as well, pray for your children every day. I have the privilege of having four children serving the Lord and six grandchildren who serve the Lord and all their spouses do as well. How did that happen? Well, first of all, I pray for my kids every day. I had a conversation with my daughter just this last weekend where she was talking about her situation, what was going on in her world, and uh, I had the privilege of praying with her. It was a wonderful time as we got together and we prayed. It was, it was wonderful to be able to pray with your children. Pray for your children every single day. And then it goes on to say this, and are not open to the charge of being whose uh, children who are not open to a charge of being wild and disobedient. He says, listen, you got to have your kids under control. That means you need to walk with love and discipline. And that's not easy to do today because the world is trying to tell you, well, you can't discipline your kids, you're going to break their spirit. But you know, the reality is you need to set boundaries around your kids, realistic boundaries. And secondly, you are to love them and show them love all the time. And when you do have to discipline, do it in a manner of love, not of anger or uh, out of duty. But he says this also as well. He says, since an overseer manages God's household, he must be blameless. You see, when you're an overseer or an elder, your responsibility is to live a life like Jesus Christ. And folks, I want to tell you, it can be done. That's why we need the grace of God. The grace of God enables us to have the power to be able to be blameless before God and live a life worthy of God. And it means yielding our thoughts, our words, our deeds, our attitudes and motives to the Lord, saying, Lord, would you please have control of these areas and turning them over to Him and allowing Him to lead and guide you through. Then he goes on to say, He must be not overbearing. That simply means that you should not be going out and say, hey, I'm a church leader, so you need to do what I, what you want me to do. You know, there's a lot of people out there that, you know, responsibility or authority goes to their head. It shouldn't be. It should be servant leadership. Then he also says, not quick-tempered. Oh, that's important. That means that you don't blow off your handle just because things don't go your way. In fact, the Bible tells us in James chapter 1 that we are to be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Listen, if you want to be slow to anger, you have to be quick to hear. And also as well, slow to speak. That means put a watchman over the door of your mouth. You know, you can engage your brain before you speak. Then he goes on to say as well, not uh, given to drunkenness. That means that basically you're an individual who walks with self-control. And self-control is actually a fruit of the Spirit. He says, not violent, not pursuing dishonest gain. Very, very simply, anger will always lead to some sort of violence. Now, violence doesn't mean you're punching somebody. No, you can actually tear somebody apart by your tongue. So it's very, very important that you realize that God has called you 
to be an individual who walks with grace and with peace. Also as well, he says, not after dishonest gain. Now one of the one of the things that people always blame churches and pastors and leaders is they're in it for the money. And in some cases they are. But in most cases, it is not that way. Most cases, pastors and church leaders are doing it because they want to serve the Lord and be an example and a help to those within the congregation. Then it also says, he rather must be hospitable. That means walk in hospitality. That means if someone needs something, you be there to help them out. You're called to be an example of hospitality and love within your church community and the community at large. He also says, and loves what is good. That is a wonderful quality. In fact, that is a quality of love as described in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 to 8. Walk in love. You need to do that. Also as well, he says, self-controlled. There is what we talked about before. That is again a fruit of the Spirit. And then he goes on to say, who is upright, holy, and disciplined. Listen, those three qualities in themselves, upright. That means that your desire is to be walking right before God and right before man. And also as well, holy. You have decided to live a separate life. You are not part of this world. You are living in this world, but this is not as best as it gets. You're a pilgrim passing through. And you understand that. But while you are here, you're going to be the best uh, believer and example of Jesus Christ. And you're going to follow the example of Jesus Christ and discipline. That means, again, self-control. That means self-discipline. That means that you're going to say, wait a minute, I am going to put myself under the direction and under the control of the Holy Spirit. He also says he must hold firmly to the trustworthy message as has been taught. That means that when they hear about Jesus Christ, they don't follow deviations thereof. They stay to the Bible and the Bible itself. And so, folks, that's why it's so very important that we hold on to the truth that we have received. And so that he may encourage others with sound doctrine and refute those who oppose it. He needs to know his Bible inside and out. He needs to study to show himself approved. A workman who needs not to be ashamed, but rightly divides the word of truth. That's what an elder or a uh, a leader is supposed to do. And not only are we to defend the truth, but we are to come against those that would oppose it. You see, when we were dealing with uh, the book of Jude and the book of John and James and Peter, one of the correlations of that particular book, and even Paul books that we're going to be looking at in this series is the fact that we need to oppose the false prophets and false teachers. And there's so many out there. And when they come into your church, your responsibility is to say, confront them and oppose them in love. If necessary, expose them for what they are. But you know what? We are to hold on to that which is good. We are to promote and the things of God, and follow the things of God. That is what an elder, a church leader is supposed to do. These are wonderful guidelines, and if you're a church leader, I trust that this has been helpful. My name is Robert Dean Steele. This is your daily Bible class. You have yourself a great and godly day.